In July 2021, travel bloggers Gabby and Brian embarked on a road trip across the United States. Everywhere they went, they took photos, filmed videos, and immediately posted updates on social media. This trip was both a vacation and a job, as they had to continuously post content throughout their journey. Videos and photos of their trip were uploaded regularly. Many fans followed Gabby and Brian's journey daily, captivated by their cheerful and romantic relationship. It would have been wonderful if everything had continued peacefully, but if that were the case, this video wouldn't exist. Tragically, disaster struck. On August 26th, Gabby's last photo was posted on Instagram. On September 1st, Brian returned to his parents' home in Gabby's van. He came back alone, without Gabby. Gabby's distraught family, along with the police, made every effort to find her, while Brian hired a lawyer and remained silent, hiding at home. What happened to Gabby? What did Brian do to earn the label, the second Chris Watts? Why did a trip that was supposed to be filled with happiness end in such a tragic way? Today, after consulting and compiling information from various sources, let's go through the details of this case together. I experienced many mixed emotions while researching it, perhaps because this case involves love, a feeling that should be used to protect others, not to cause harm. This video is about a heartbreaking case involving psychology and love. It will include many of my personal opinions. You may agree or disagree with me and that's okay, but keep watching, because it's worth it. Gabby and Brian were a very young couple. Gabby was born in 1999 and Brian in 1997. On social media, they appeared as a newly engaged couple deeply in love. Beforehand, they had jobs but quit due to the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Gabby and Brian chose to become social media influencers as their main profession. Gabby was well known on social media as a travel blogger. She saved up and bought a small van, converting its interior into a professional camper. Her dream was likely to travel everywhere with her beloved in this van, which served as their home, combining work and play. Though somewhat dreamy, this was a beautiful and legitimate aspiration for Gabby. Positivity, joy and boundless energy are what you'll feel strongly when visiting the Instagram, TikTok or YouTube pages of this couple. On July 2nd, 2021, Gabby and Brian officially began their road trip across the United States in Gabby's van. Photos and videos of their journey started appearing on their social media accounts, on Instagram, TikTok and even a lengthy YouTube video titled Van Life. Just by looking at Gabby's online posts, anyone would think she was very happy, living the best days of her youth, free to do what she loved with the person she loved. But was reality as perfect as they portrayed? About a month into the trip, something happened between the couple. On August 12, 2021, Moab, Utah police discovered Gabby and Brian in the middle of a severe argument, prompting the officers to pull them over and separate them for questioning. We will analyze this police video in a moment. After interviewing both, the police advised them to spend a night apart to cool down. What happened after that day remained a mystery for about a month. On September 1st, 2021, something alarming occurred. Brian returned to his parents' house alone in Gabby's van. Gabby's family, unable to contact her, reported her missing to the police. When officers reached out to Brian, he had already hired a lawyer and was hiding inside his house. At this point, the police were almost at a standstill in their efforts to locate Gabby and had no clue what had happened to her. However, unexpected help soon arrived. Several TikTokers played a significant role in aiding the police to find Gabby. TikToker Paris Campbell was the first to draw attention to this case. She posted a video about Gabby's disappearance and continued to upload over 40 videos throughout the week, 
Analyzing the locations where Gabby had checked in on social media, the investigation gained momentum as more TikTokers joined in, tracking Gabby based on her social media posts. Then, a crucial piece of information surfaced. Two travel bloggers, Kyle Bethune and Jen, who frequently traveled across the country in their camper, realized that on the day they visited the Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming, Gabby was also present at the same location. Reviewing their videos from that day, they discovered they had actually captured footage of Gabby's white van parked by the roadside. This information was immediately sent to the FBI. Using the location of the van in the video, the FBI examined the area around it. They eventually found Gabby, or what was left of her. The most heartbreaking outcome had occurred. The body was taken for examination and was estimated to have been there for four weeks. The cause of death was announced by the police as manual strangulation. Who else could this someone be but Brian? The police urgently sought to apprehend Brian because, after Gabby went missing, he used her bank card and withdrew over $1,000. The police used this unauthorized use of Gabby's bank card as a reason to charge Brian and attempt to arrest him. However, the police arrived too late. By the time Gabby's body was found on September 19th, Brian had been missing since September 13th. A warrant was issued for Brian's arrest. Will Brian be caught? We'll discuss the conclusion of this case at the end of the video. For now, Let's analyze the police video from the day they argued and try to deduce what happened during that ill-fated road trip. On August 12, 2021, the police received a call from a concerned citizen. The caller reported seeing a young man, Brian, hitting a woman, Gabby, and even preventing her from getting into their van. The police decided to follow the couple's vehicle. The officer observed the van swerving and hitting the curb, prompting him to pull them over for a check. Here is 25. Oh! Subjects just hit the curb. Sorry, officer. Do you want to place your vehicle into park and go ahead and turn it off for me? Yeah, yeah. No, park? Oh, it, it isn't parked yet. Okay, turn off your engine. Go ahead and set your keys on the dash for me, all right? What's your guys' names? Gabby. I'm Brian. Gabby, Brian, okay. What's going on? How come you're crying? I'm just crying. We've just been fighting this morning. <laughs> Some personal issues. It was a long day. We were camping yesterday and camping got supplies and stuff. Gabby mentioned an argument that morning while Brian tried to deflect by talking about how annoying the flies were. Can I get you to step out of the vehicle for me, man? Yeah. The officer separated them to interview each individually. This basic interrogation technique involves listening to each side's story separately, comparing them, and uncovering the truth. You want to tell me what's going on? Yeah, I don't know. It's just, some days, I, <laughs> I have really bad OCD. And okay. I just, I was just cleaning and straightening up the back of the van before, and I was apologizing to him and saying, I'm sorry that I'm so mean, because sometimes I have OCD, and sometimes I just get really frustrated. I'm not like, mean for him. I just like, so much work I was doing on my computer this morning. What do you do for a living? I'm trying to start a blog. I okay. just have a lot of stuff, so I've been... She had a lot of work to do, but Brian was not supportive. I've just been really stressed, and he doesn't really believe that I could do any of it, so that's kind of been like a... I don't know, he's like... An, we can see her unconsciously resting her head on her knees, as if she is about to collapse at the thought of Brian not supporting her work. I don't know, we've just been fighting all morning, and this is a rough morning. Well... She said it had been a difficult morning, but it was actually almost 5 p.m. She unconsciously confused 5 p.m. with the morning. This indicates that the events from the morning hadn't stopped and were very distressing, causing Gabby to lose track of time and refer to 5 p.m. as the morning. Why don't we do this? Why don't I sit you down in the back seat of my car? You're not in any trouble, okay? <laughs> I'm not gonna be putting handcuffs on you. Hey, how are you doing? Good, how are you? 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 Good
how are you? What happened? What's going on? I'm just having a stress, a very stress morning. I'm trying to get a lot of work done, and I was apologizing to him. On the, the, I had thrown a bunch of stuff in the back, and all our bags are back there. I was just, I have OCD, and I was just like organizing stuff. And sometimes I just have a mean attitude, but I'm not trying to be mean about just straightening things up and stuff. So I was just apologizing, but I guess I said it in like a mean tone. And Gabby's hand gestures, constantly touching her thighs indicate anxiety. But when you listen to what Gabby says, do you notice she's taking the blame? She recounts their arguments but takes the responsibility on herself, which means she's trying to protect Brian. Yeah? Is there something on your cheek here? Looks like, did, did, you, get, did you get hit in the face? She just checked to see if she was bleeding. Let's see how she explains the injuries on her body. Um, kind of looks like something like hit you in the face. And then over on your arm, your shoulder, right here, There's, that's new, huh? It's kind of a new mark. Oh yeah, I don't know. Can I see the other side of your face? So, what happened here and here? Um, I, I'm not sure it was a... First thing, Brian. I was just trying to get in the back of the car and it's back of the car. And it's back of the car. Do you notice the hesitation? She even says the injuries were caused by her backpack. This is clearly a lie to cover up Brian's assault. So the backpack got you? So there's two people that came to us and told us that they saw him hit you. There's two people saying that they saw him punch you. We're just independent witnesses by Moonflower. When hearing there was a complaint, Gabby appeared worried. She was obviously the one being hit, but was concerned for the person who hit her, fearing he would be arrested because someone saw him hit her. Let's see what she says next to protect him. Well, to be honest, I definitely hit him first. This is a form of distraction. The police aren't talking about what Brian did, but are turning the focus back to her. She's going to admit to hitting him to protect him. Where'd you hit him? I stopped him. Okay. And then what, and his reaction was to do what? Okay, she insists Brian didn't hit her, but says, he grabbed my hand to stop me from slapping him. Gabby is genuinely concerned for Brian as she continuously defends him. He just grabbed you? Did he, did he hit you though? I mean, I mean, it's okay if you're saying you hit him, and then I, I understand if he hit you, but we want to know the truth if he actually hit you. Because, you know. Again, she takes the blame on herself. Where did he hit you? Don't, don't worry, just be honest. He grabbed my face, like, I guess. Uh huh. Um, he didn't like, hit me in the face, like, he didn't like punch me in the face or anything. Even when she finally admits what Brian did, you can see she downplays his actions significantly. Normally we take people to jail, but he's... The police just mentioned the possibility of jail time. Let's see Gabby's reaction. Tomorrow... I don't, don't want to be separated. Then. <laughs> you gonna have anxiety? Yeah, yeah, no, we're a team, please. <laughs> There's not? What is it? No, like, we're a team, please. I'm gonna, it's gonna give me so much anxiety. Can we just have a, like, a, a driving ticket? Okay. <laughs> because if we get, I'll, I'll pay you any driving ticket, a parking ticket, anything. Okay, Gabby? If that'd be Gabby? Better, Try to calm. She almost panics at the thought of Brian going to jail. Gabby doesn't want to be separated from Brian. Summarizing her words and gestures, we can see she has been very tired since the morning, and their argument was intense. This is a rough morning. Well. Gabby was even assaulted and prevented from getting into the van. He got really frustrated with me and he locked me out of the car. And but when faced with the police, she did everything to protect her abuser. Trying to get in the back of the car and it's back. I have to go back. And he Gabby covered for him in every way, even worrying about him being accused and taking the blame for the assault on herself. Because you know, I guess, yeah, but I Gabby might have hit Brian, as she said, but it's clear that she truly loved him and is a kind-hearted person. Now let's see what Brian had to say. What's that? You to Gabby, right? Yeah, I just spoke to her. Yeah. We see Brian ask a rather pointless question, followed by some hand gestures. This indicates he's nervous and worried that Gabby might say something bad about him to the police. So, 
You want to do me a favor? Let's go ahead and get you to step out of the vehicle. All righty. Come on over here. You're not in any trouble right now. It's evident that Brian is complying with the police without question or resistance. So, tell me what's going on. It, the shoes get worked up sometimes, and I try and really distance myself from her. So, like, I, I lock the car and I walk away from her. What, what happened this morning is that she's trying to start up like her own little website blog. And everything. He appears calm, completely different from Gabby's distressed state. I give her time. And I, we really had a nice morning, if anything, and if anything, but um. Did you notice how he said it was a good morning, whereas Gabby described it as the opposite? A morning so difficult she lost track of time. So, who is lying? Clearly Brian is lying. You can see he stammers and tries to speak quickly. We really had a nice morning, if anything, but, um... When lying, people tend to be tense, and speaking quickly is a reflex to get past the lie and relieve the tension. We really had a nice morning, if anything, if anything but, um... It's obvious Brian is lying. That morning they had a big argument, just as Gabby said. Brian then gave a relatively truthful account of what happened. You, you want to tell me about those scratches on your face? She had a cell phone in her hand, that's why I was pushing her away. She's that way, I was just trying to... I know I shouldn't push, but I was just trying to push her away to go, let's, let's just take a minute, step back and breathe, and... She, she got me he claimed that all he did was push Gabby away because she grabbed the steering wheel. Hitting that curve? Hitting the curve was her grabbing the wheel. She grabbed the wheel? Yeah. She said, I can't believe we're getting pulled over in this. Causing the van to swerve. At this point, we can clearly see the contrast between Brian and Gabby. Gabby is doing everything she can to protect Brian. I was just apologizing, but I guess I said it in like a mean tone. and Gabby, yeah, I'm going to well, to be honest, I definitely hit him first. While he is shifting all the blame onto Gabby. What, what happened this morning is that she's trying to start up like her own little website blog and everything. So, and then she had her phone and was trying to get the keys to so it. That way I was just trying to... Hitting the curve was her grip on the wheel. This officer looks at Gabby's condition and then returns to talk to Brian. Yeah, a lot of angles, a lot of nails, a lot of rings. Yeah, you got yeah, three scratches in your neck. You got one on your left side of your neck. Do you mind lifting up your right sleeve for me? I'm curious about something. Oh. By now, it seems all the officers have been fooled by his friendly and cooperative demeanor. They appear to genuinely believe he is the victim in this situation. Okay. Yeah, it's a bit nail. I suppose fingernails, but yeah, I'm not complaining. Absolutely. I'm not complaining about is it bruised? The scratches on his body further convince the police that he is the victim. Bruised or tender or anything like no, that? No, no, no. Okay. I'm fine, and I love Gabby. I, I hope she doesn't have too many complaints about me. <laughs> I'm just, uh, you know, I... It's heartbreaking to see Gabby constantly trying to protect Brian, even lying about her injuries being caused by a backpack. Meanwhile, he shows his injuries nonchalantly, pointing the finger at Gabby as if she is the one at fault. He even smirks, <laughs> as if to tell the police not to believe Gabby, implying she might say anything to incriminate him after this encounter. The police ask them to spend a night apart to cool down. They let Gabby sleep in the van and booked a hotel room for Brian, believing he was the victim. Because of these actions, the police faced heavy criticism in this case. Many people felt the police misjudged the situation indirectly leading to Gabby's tragic end. Later, it was clear that if the police had been more stringent that day, the outcome could have been very different. The truth is that not long after that day, Gabby was murdered by Brian. I personally hesitate to criticize the police's actions. I feel that the situation was very challenging for the officers, especially since Gabby, the victim, was so focused on protecting Brian. The young girl's love, full of sacrifice and innocence, made me feel deeply bitter. It's been a long time since I've felt such sorrow while researching a case. Perhaps it's because, when analyzing their actions, I saw such a stark contrast between the two who were once partners, and I thought about how despicable Brian's actions were, given how much Gabby loved him. Now let's move on to the conclusion of the case. Gabby's body was found on September 19th. About a month later, on October 20th, 2021, 
the police discovered another body in the Carlton Reserve, Sarasota County, Florida. The body and belongings were submerged, making identification difficult. Despite the challenges, the police confirmed it was Brian. He had died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. Along with this, the police recovered Brian's notebook. He had left a note before he died. The note was lengthy but included key points where he claimed that Gabby had an accident, falling and getting severely injured. He said he had to end her life to end her pain. He wrote, I ended her life. I thought it was merciful, that it was what she wanted, but now I see all the mistakes I made. He also explained his reason for ending his own life in the woods. I am ending my life not because of fear of punishment, but because I cannot stand to live another day without her. Brian confessed in this way, but experts believe his account doesn't match the investigators' findings. The autopsy revealed that Gabby was strangled manually, not that she had an accident. Some experts think Brian was trying to avoid admitting what he did and was looking for a justification for his actions. I fully agree with this assessment. With Brian's death and his confession, the case officially ended. Looking back at the entire case, we see Gabby and Brian traveling across the US in their converted van. Gabby had quit her job and was striving to become a social media influencer. She had to balance traveling and working, but in my view, this trip was more like full-time work than a vacation. Gabby had to constantly post on Instagram, TikTok, and create YouTube videos, and she was even working on designing her own website. It was truly a heavy workload. This young woman had to manage an enormous amount of work alone, and it was even more tragic that the person she loved did not support her. It's very likely that Gabby's busy schedule led to arguments between them. From the analysis above, we can also see that Brian did not appreciate Gabby as much as she did him. The arguments escalated over time. We may never know the terrible events that occurred during those days, but we do know that Gabby was murdered by the person she loved. Brian later took his own life. He left a confession note, but its content seemed more like an excuse. A psychologist analyzed the note as follows. He used the word I a lot in the letter, talking extensively about himself. This shows he didn't truly feel any compassion for Gabby. He saw himself as the victim and wanted people to sympathize with him, even though Gabby was the one who was killed. He described his act of murder as a heroic deed, ending Gabby's life because she asked him to relieve her pain. According to the FBI's analysis and the autopsy, this is undoubtedly a lie. Psychologically, no one would think of killing their loved one in such a way. He fabricated this story simply because he didn't want to admit his crime. He even blamed Gabby, claiming she asked him to do it. He was a narcissist with an inflated ego, even when no one else was around, and even when he was about to take his own life. He wanted to protect his ego and pride to the very end. The psychologist noted that he was a clumsy and ineffective manipulator. He tried to manipulate readers into believing he was a good person, but it was obvious that this was false. It is truly tragic that Gabby was killed by someone she genuinely loved while the despicable murderer claimed to love her. Even in death, he said he died because he couldn't live without her. There are cases where people call it murder out of love. In my opinion, it's unfair to use love as an excuse to justify such vile actions. Love is the most beautiful emotion. Don't confuse love with impulsive cruelty, possessiveness or selfishness. True love encompasses compassion, forgiveness, sacrifice and healing. Look at how Gabby protected her abuser. Despite her submissiveness, it was genuine. The most tragic part is that she loved the wrong person. Brian only cared about himself. He didn't know what love truly was. 
Like many murderers who claimed to kill out of love, he was selfish and possessive, treating his partner as an object to own. If he couldn't have her, no one else could. His ego was supreme. All his feelings and emotions were paramount. With such characteristics, he never cared about others' feelings. Any show of concern was fake. They elevate their egos and, after committing horrendous acts, claim it was out of love turned into hate. It's despicable. Those who know nothing about love falsely claim it. You can die for someone you love, but how can you kill someone you love? These are completely opposite actions, yet they deliberately confuse them. They do this to avoid admitting their despicable, cruel murderers. To protect their enormous egos, they use love as a shield, deceiving themselves into thinking they were justified and deceiving those who don't truly understand love, seeking sympathy. As a human being, if you truly love someone, you cannot kill them. Murdering someone is never out of love. Don't use love as a reason to justify heinous actions. Thank you for watching the entire video. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you very much and see you in other videos.